First of all, we'd just like to thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to present our project. We spent a lot of time um, gathering all the right information, making our models, and <coughs> trying to accurately predict how to control a refinery, a fuel gas uh, fired boiler in a refinery. And just to introduce that concept a little bit more, the boiler in these refineries are extremely valuable because they produce steam that's going to be used throughout the refinery. And the trouble comes um, from the composition of the fuel gas. This gas comes from many different places within the refinery, like a distillation column, and so the composition varies all of the time. And this makes it difficult because in order to combust it properly, you need to add the, right, the correct amount of air. And because the composition varies so much, typically they manually set the air, air valves to add a lot of excess oxygen. And what this does is decreases the efficiency quite a bit and it makes it difficult to control the temperature of the burners. And so our objective was to design a controller that would allow us to maintain the temperature of the burner by adding the correct amount of oxygen and thereby also um, maintain a set point of steam pressure. Okay, so to talk a little bit more about our model development, we simplified the boiler to be a cylindrical firebox and we only modeled the radiative section to simplify the heat transfer equations and make them um, in a way that we can model them. We had three separate models. The combustion model calculated flame temperature as a function of fuel composition, fuel flow, and airflow. The heat transfer model calculated steam temperature as a um, function of flame temperature and it accounted for that radiation as well as the heat transfer through the tubes. And then the XSO2 model was an algebraic model which calculated the percent XSO2 as a function of fuel composition, airflow, and fuel flow. And then we linearized these models and put them into state space form. And then we went ahead and converted them to transfer functions using MATLAB to make the simulation run faster. To look at our Simulink block diagram, um, right here we have the combustion models and then it feeds through to the heat transfer models and this is the top loop which calculates the steam temperature. There was also a parallel control loop which used the excess oxygen models and then we have the two set points you notice on the left hand side steam temperature and excess O2. Here you'll notice the disturbance in the fuel composition which feeds into both loops the steam temperature and the excess O2 we also notice that the amount of air acts as a disturbance within the steam temperature loop because extra air is just wasted energy that we're sending out in nitrogen. And also the amount of fuel acts as a disturbance within the air loop because more fuel requires more oxygen. So as we tuned the controllers, we broke one controller at a time and tuned each one individually, but accounted for these disturbances by just creating a simulink disturbance for the air or fuel depending on which we were tuning. Here are results up in the top left you'll see the disturbance from our fuel composition which varied quite a bit over our 100 seconds that we have here. We had a set point change in each the amount of excess O2 and the temperature controller but we tuned our controllers to favor disturbance rejection over set point tracking because the set points won't change very often, but the disturbances happen all the time. So the big jumps in the blue lines that you see there in the results are from set point changes, and we're okay with those big jumps because they don't happen too often. But our, we believe our controllers were successful because the temperature of the steam never varied by more than one or two degrees, and the excess O2 may have jumped a little bit, but it went back within about a second, and not much bad is going to happen within a, a second. So in conclusion, we were able to demonstrate successful control of steam temperature and excess air in this interacting system. And we thought a lot about what we could do to even take this a step further. And we think it would be beneficial to utilize a nonlinear model in the Simulink simulation because the model was linearized with the state space form, but it was highly nonlinear. So we had to make some approximations that would add error. Additionally, we thought it would be beneficial to add valve dynamics and maybe reaction kinetics so that we had that dead time, which would decrease the system's ability to reject disturbances. And in order to account for that, we would also want to add feed forward controllers between the loops to 
further improve the disturbance rejection.